Rabbi Al-Mahdi. my friends welcome back now today now my friend it done um i will really make the video i will give you a short um information about this so he wanted me to remake the the terminology nephilim the word nephilim and he also wanted me to explain the day, what day was the Sabbath really, so on and so forth, all right, so we're going to do a short version, my friend, um, because I'm also going to add into this video here, I'm also going to add in the red heifer, why they want to slaughter the red heifer, um, why they want to rebuild the temple, what is the abomination that causes desolation, the mark of the beast? I'm going to expose it all for everyone um, so you have a greater understanding. And then you'll also understand greater why I don't practice any shirk religions that come out of Constantinople and Istanbul, period. Nor do I practice any religion that has a polytheistic uh, godhead, okay? And I'm not in any part. I want to be cl very clear about that. I don't practice any of your guys' shirk crap. Nor will you ever get me into it. Because I have too much knowledge to understand uh, what's really going on. And I'm going to share it with you all out there. And then you as well, when you understand it, you'll understand why religion itself is, is the great deception that everybody has fallen into. Okay. Starting with the word Nephilim. So a lot of people like History Channel and all these other guys, they try to say the Nephilim are aliens. Okay, get real. Get the fuck out of here with that nonsense. There's no such thing as any of that type of shit ever. That's propaganda in order for the governments of the world to control and manipulate so that they have something in entertainment that manipulates you and controls you. They create that for you, okay? to make you argue and fight or not believe or you do believe or this or that and then it keeps you away from the absolute truth okay so they create that fakeness of it so the word nephilim in this context you will know that the word was was uh, translated as serpent or naga and Naga in serpent means snake, but it is in a greater context, if you notice, it's very cunning than the rest of the creation. So when you understand this, this is not an animal, it's not a lizard, it's not a snake, it's not a serpent in this manner. It's actual human beings. Human beings that are called Nephilim, the word Nephilim from the fall means the fallen ones. Anything added with I am means it's many. So Elohim is the many, right? So Nephal, the many that have fallen away. And where do you find the Nephilim located? That's right, at the tree of knowledge. The tree of knowledge is where you find these guys located. And why? Well, when we go into the context of the tree, why did Eve, Hawa, why did she approach the tree to begin with? And if you read what she says, it states that it was... Something that was desirable, desirable that what? For wisdom. So those that are hanging around this tree, these serpents, these nagas, these fallen ones, 
Fallen from where? Fallen away from the tree of life. They are mingling themselves and eating and partaking from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And these people think that they are wise. Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 8 in the context, all right? And you also understand if you go to Jeremiah, and I'll post it all together. In Jeremiah chapter 8 in verse 1 and 2, you clearly understand in this what religion really is. It's the bringing out, and this is what Nephilim do, they bring out the old past things, they dig up, so this in actuality, so you understand the greater context of Jeremiah, these are doctors, lawyers, Scientists, teachers, and you get the gist. So basically the Nephilim were those that appeared, appeared to have wisdom, but really they didn't. They were ignorant. And they were the cause of the fall. They caused the fall. A lot of people, they like to blame Adam. Adam caused the fall. Eve caused the fall. No. Adam and Eve were tricked by those who caused the fall. Right? That's where those word Nephilim comes from. And when you understand the, the shining ones, as the Hebrew gives you a definition, so nobody has the proper understanding. And that is what leads up to what uh, is considered the abomination of desolation, because no one has proper understanding of the their uh, word of God in any flock or fold. They all have been manipulated and corrupted and misinterpreted. So you have this great deception in religion itself to where later, because of this, it's going to cause what I'm going to share with you next in, in what's coming in this video. So these are the cause of it, and they think they're wise. Now, these guys create, okay, um, what you would have as when the Nephilim, when it says the Nephilim, they take for themselves wives of the sons of daughters, sons of men, in this manner. So you have what you think is the wise people. They go and they take wives of the illiterate or the dumb or the uneducated. That's what that means. When it says daughters of men, it doesn't mean that these are not humans. It's there is a class that who creates class to begin with. Think about that. Why do why do we think doctors are better than janitors? Why do you think a sports player is better than a non-sports player? Right? You understand? So they create the separation. Therefore, even in the great fall, as you watch in my previous video, we are all servants of God, equal. When you're eating, eating from the tree of life, you are equal that you're a servant. But here they eat from the tree of knowledge of good and neither evil. Therefore, they separate themselves into classes. So when it says that the Nephilim took wives of the daughters of men, of anyone they chose, now you understand that what it was they chose. And in doing so, these women gave birth to what is called... Hang on one minute, let me get my eraser. Into what you would call... so. We'll, we'll, we'll use the Sabbath for uh, after this. So what you would get into is what you would call the men of renown. So basically, these foul individuals of corruption, of constantly doing evil. For instance, you got the doctors creating uh, things in labs, like the coronavirus, which is not a naturally found thing. Meanwhile, you got a group of... Uh, scientists or doctors or lawyers or teachers that are creating a mind frame for instance you got a lot of psychiatrists who tried to say oh this child is this so it needs this kind of medicine even though that's not what is taking place but because they do these things they teach the children from the daughters of men that they have created they teach them this stuff and then these become known as the men of free no 
So even in today's society, you have actors, movie stars, sports players, and then you look at what they believe, what they follow, what is the character, what makes them who they are outside of, yes, they are known to be a sports star, they're known to be a, a singer, they're known to be these, yes, but what is their belief? Then you clearly see the deception that they all have. Because they try to bring you into the Nakash world uh, of, and this, this serpent, I, 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 I am sorry, Nakash, Nephilim are the creation of the Nakash, which breeds the men of renown. So let me rewrite this, I apologize for that. Um, so Nakash is serpent. And the Nephilim were on the earth in those days, which they used the word, the, the fallen ones, but then they tried to misguide you and try to say it means giants. That doesn't mean giants, all right? Nephal means the fallen ones, as I gave you earlier. Nakash is the word for the serpents for the Naga. And the Nakash is eating from this tree. So these Nakash, they take wives of them and they create the Nephilim, which later the Nephilim become men of renown, as I stated before, and they 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 bring you back to the the fake wisdom, the lying wisdom, and the great deception. So even in our today's society, they will use the movie star, the actor, the singer, in order to promote a agenda that they want to force upon all of the Adamu or Hawaz or Eves in that context. So you, you understand greater, right? So here you have basically what is a Nephilim, what is a Nakash, what are the men of renown. This is who they are. They are foul individuals and most of the men of renown, they don't think for themselves, they are promoters for the wicked that these guys down here bring forth. So as of now, you can even clearly see that they're all trying to say that, oh, we have a problem with mental illnesses in the nation. And then, oh, mental illness in the nation, not, not blaming, not blaming that which needs to be blamed, which could be the singer or musicians who are creating foul music that are influencing your young child. And then your young child wanting to be like these guys they're listening to, all of a sudden a shock in society saying, well, look at this, the kid is robbing people, the kid is outrageous, oh, Oh, the kid has lost his mind. We need to take him to the doctor. And the doctor says, "Oh, he is a mental. He has mental problem. Not, not, not." The, and and the, the the world powers instead of blaming these men of renown for the problem of your children, they want to just turn it around, blame your children, make profit by creating medicines to give your child just to put them to sleep. Fact. These fucking idiots are fucking evil motherfuckers, man. Very evil. That's why, like, if you look at all medicines that have cures, you have to pay outrageous money for things that are grown naturally out of the earth. Plants are cures. Plants. Yet you have to go and spend a hundred dollars just to have the doctor tell you you're sick and write a prescription, pre, meaning knowledge known, script is the writing, so they give their name, knowledge known, so you have to pay more money to go, and who, meanwhile, is still getting rich from all this? These same people who are the ones causing the fucking problems globally. It's all of these guys here. And if we come together and, ru and, and realize this and start get, making these guys accountable for their actions of what they're doing, we remove them from the assembly of the people and we start following the tree of life, not this tree of knowledge of good and evil. Today, hamburger meat is not good for you. Tomorrow, it's good for you. Tomorrow, snake is good for you. And the next day, snake's not good for you. They all don't know. That's why it's called medical practice. They don't know shit. 
Most wisdom that we have already have, we already have in the world. There's nothing new under the sun. We already have what we need as human beings. Anything that these guys keep making up or bringing forward is nothing but to make themselves profit off of you and and the problems that they themselves cause upon you. That's why uh, God says, give back to them that which they did to you. Pay Babylon that whore back for what she has done. And this will be later as I expose the great city, the Noam city in Saudi Arabia, what that is going to actually be like and be about later in this video. So you can understand when God destroys it, this is why God is saying, now pay her back for what she has done to you. All right, so you have this as an understanding. So now we're going to get uh, into a another word, which I told you, Idan, I would give you some other uh, words that I didn't use. So we have the Nikash, we have the Nephilim, we have the Elohim. Now we have these things called the Tetra. The Tetrahim. And these are the, the spirits that inhabit in a manner, the men of renown. So, if you look, it says that those that know God, they can take up snakes and potions and not be harmed by this. Now, you're thinking to go play around with real snakes. That's not what the meaning is. This word is, is the tetrahim. So, you have, you have the cherub, cherubim, the seraphim, and the tetrahim. So, you have seraphim. And you have the cherubim. And you also have what you have, the normal mollets or the messengers. Which is an everyday average uh, man or a woman could be a mollet. It doesn't have to necessarily be a seraphim or a cherubim. These are considered the holy ones. And the reason these are the holy ones of God is because these spirits are righteous, very powerful in that manner. Jinn are weak. Seraphim and cherubim are powerful ones. The greatest, the greatest powerful is love and to have that understanding of what it is about, love is about, and so on and so forth, is a great power of seraphim. So there are um, seven main seraphim and uh, the nine, nine main seraphim. And of these nine, these are great uh, things that are within, that can be within you when you have the understanding of what it means as in, to be an angel. Now the cherubim, which are many, many more, are the righteous works of of uh, spiritual activity within you, which could be uh, charity. Charity is a cherubim. Um, being nice to someone um, and verbally is a cherubim. Um, helping someone out who has fallen down is an act of being a cherubim. So you can understand that these these means, right, and these these holy ones. And the reason they're called holy ones is because that. Now, why is the holy of holies? And that is because the holy of holies is what creates all of the good righteous works to begin with. That's why he is the holy of holies. Now, the Moloch is the man. And the Moloch, the man, can be the messenger. And the message that it brings could be any of the seraphim or cherubim acts. The Moloch brings this into the revelation. And that could be a normal man or a woman. It doesn't have to necessarily be an actual holy one that takes upon its form. Now, there are these seraphim and cherubim that um, don't need a man because it is God himself who is bringing forth the act. Therefore, it's not necessarily a man performing the act, but a man can be used, the vessel can be used when it, a seraphim or cherubim inhabits, can be used and do whatever the act is necessary. But the, these don't need vessels. 
All right, these don't need the vessel. They can take a vessel, but they don't need a vessel in order to exist. A Moloch, however, needs a vessel. And then they bring forth whatever message is that, that God is bringing forth. So now you have the understanding of these things. Now the Tetrahim is the wicked emotions, the wicked. So this is the righteous. This is the wicked. Okay? And the wicked even have their models, which is their messengers, which are later described as the men of renown. So you can you can bring uh, forth a famous person, right? And they they bring forth a foul doctrine, or they help along the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And in this form, they're like a snake. And sometimes um, they will try to like I, I when I get involved when I go on YouTube and I want to argue or debate these guys, I'm debating treachery. Because they want to call me names. See how they are? They call me foul things. They gnash their teeth at me. They're wicked. They're evil. They act like snakes uh, that try to bite or poison me. But I am not harmed by them, nor can they harm me. It's not that I'm picking up real snakes, because if a real snake turns around and bites you, it's going to be poisonous, okay? You're going to either, you better get medicine or you're going to die. There is no other this nonsense where people create lies and storylines in, in hocus pocus god doesn't practice hocus pocus there's reality to all of this and that's what the if you don't have this true reality you're in the great deception of religion following along with their hocus pocus ideologies you're never going to come to the true understanding of the most high god in his word so the tetrahim is exactly what that is those that try to gnash out at the righteous or cause them a stumbling block, they throw a stumbling block in front of them, this and that. But as you see, when Jesus says, I will give you power over them. And the power that he gives you that's over them is not hocus pocus power, it's wisdom. Because he is the one that states, one wiser than Solomon is here. So it's the wisdom, not that the wisdom of the tree of Garden of Eden. It's not that wisdom. It's the wisdom from the tree of life. And that's granted to his um, followers. And the spirit of truth comes upon you and guides you into all truths. Therefore, when you come across the Tetrahim in any of your um, doings or works, they will not be able to bite you. They will not be able to poison. You will be able to drink their poison that they give you, and you won't be harmed. Do you understand the meaning, meaning of that now? The true meaning. Not all these religious uh, bullshit, hocus-pocus nonsense that I guarantee you. Come in front of me, claim that you have the Holy Spirit in you or whatever. And tell me that you're you're going to uh, depend upon uh, whatever it is, hocus pocus, that you have written in your mind. And let me take my staff and whack you a couple of fucking times in the fucking face. And you tell me if you got away from my injury I caused you. So you don't live in a reality of truth. You live in some fantasy land and you're leading all the people astray in all your bullshit that you guys teach out there. Fact. Let's get back to reality and start teaching truth so that the people, of the, the, the sheep will have a greater understanding and be able to defend themselves against the wilds and the works and the wicked things that the shaitan or the devil has brought forth into this creation. Okay? Otherwise, here's some fucking, uh, um, what do you call that, uh, anthrax. Here's some anthrax. Uh, put it in some water and go drink it, you jackass. You don't know what you're talking about. You will die if you did that shit. It's called wisdom, knowledge, understanding. So, hocus pocus, don't follow it, all right?
Now, you have that great understanding of the clarification of those. Many people try to lie to you. They call them uh, aliens. Aliens came down, abducted women, and had sex with women. And now we have half alien and half lizard people running around the earth. And all this fucking nonsense shit that the fucking governments and everybody else sits there and uses the Nakash to promote such foul ideologies and nonsense in the fucking world. Let me take a fucking gun to these guys talking this shit. And you shoot them dead. Oh, look, you're dead. Now you're not talking like this no more. Now you're not speaking like this no more. Now you're not filling the world with crazy nonsense. But I thought you had great power, man. I thought you could do that which was God's work in the world. It looks like you're just nothing but a sack of bones now. You should have got real wisdom. Stop eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It does you no fucking good. You understand? Don't do it. Go to the tree of life where you can learn real wisdom, real truth about the word of God, and be able to defend yourself against all the works of wicked. Now we go to the word Sabbath. You wanted to know. You wanted to know what Sabbath was about. The word Sabbath is the word meaning for rest. And it states the reason that the Sabbath is given is for men. Sabbath was created for men, not man for the Sabbath. Sabbath was created for man so that man could, what? Rest from all his work. Okay? And his struggle. So if you have the greater understanding that during the Sabbath was when the sacrifice was given. Jesus was crucified around the Sabbath. So you have Jesus, Isa, Yeshua. He was crucified on this Sabbath, which gives us the rest from all of our suffering, our pain. When you believe in him in the manner, then you are at rest, at peace with God the Father now. So the Sabbath, before the foundation of the world, Okay, you have to understand, before the foundation of the world, there was this Sabbath was created, okay? Now, God had already known of the Sabbath. Before he even spoke light, there was Sabbath. On, after he completed everything, he entered into what was already Sabbath for him. He went out of the, the rest to create things, and then on the seventh day, he went back to this rest, and he rested on the seventh day. And that Sabbath is what we practice, and the Sabbath is not Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. It, Sabbath is not a day. Sabbath is any time you... Feel like resting from the work and labor that you have, meaning the struggle that you are in. Any time you want to call out to the Most High God, any time you want to acknowledge the sacrifice that He gave, that is the Sabbath, which brings us into the workings of the red heifer and the abomination that causes desolation and so on and so forth. So the Sabbath of the understanding, and I'll get into greater for you, Egon, that I did not get into in the first video. The Sabbath is the understanding, all right, of the sacrifice That God brought forth, which was his lamb. It's God's work. It's God's Sabbath. It's God. Everything belongs to God. And in the understanding of the Sabbath sacrifice, there is a remembrance, which is a daily thing. It's daily. It's not only on one day. Then you'll have the understanding of what later in the book of Daniel, um, chapter 12, when it's talking about the... Um, abomination that causes desolation, which I will post for you. When they're talking about the daily sacrifice, they're talking about what Jesus did at the thing called the Last Supper. And at this Last Supper, 
Jesus gives you the only ritual necessary for your forgiveness or for you to enter back into the rest of the forgiveness of your sins to be at rest with your struggle. He gives you two things, bread and wine. Why? Because he is in the order of Melchizedek. This order is the, is the spiritual priesthood, not the fleshly priesthood. So he gives this to you in remembrance. Remember what he says? He says, do this in remembrance of me. So you don't have to do it only on Sunday. And you don't have to do it on an on a hour, certain hours or minutes. The Last Supper activity of our ritual can be whenever you want. And, and it's just the remembrance. You don't necessarily need bread and wine. You don't necessarily need to go into a building to perform these acts. You don't need someone to stand up there in front of you on a podium to perform the act, as in Catholicism does, or any other, other religions do. You don't need the act of sacrificing an animal, cutting the throat of a goat, and having the blood pour out, all this stuff. You don't need that. You have this remembrance of what God did. Now, if you want, you can go get some bread and some wine and perform the ritual in that manner, but it's not beneficial. It doesn't, it doesn't save you or not save you. What it saves you is the faith and the belief, okay, that's within you. The kingdom of God is in you. So that is what, what is the, the counting, the counts. So, so this is the remembrance of the Last Supper, which is called the daily sacrifice. Because every day of our life, we are always backsliding. Some people worse than others, right? So we need the daily sacrifice in order to bring the Isa Seselam, or the Lamb of God, or the peace of God, back between man and God. Because if you fall, you backslide, and you don't have that daily sacrifice or that forgiveness, that repentance, then God will always be at uh, odds with you in your struggle, right? You, His wrath will always abide upon you. And you don't want that happening. So daily, and, and we even used to teach our little children, I don't think they do it anymore, but we used to teach our children before you go to bed to ask God to forgive your sins and to, to ask God to help. You know, you get down, you see a little child when they pray and, and bless my mommy, bless my daddy and, and, and forgive me of what I have done today. If I have sinned, please forgive me. And you did this daily, every day, you know. So it's called the daily sacrifice. Now, in the book of Daniel 12, um, we are going to have what is known, what is coming. So I had another question from another guy, and he was asking me about the red heifer. So in the red heifer understanding, so for Muhammad, the red heifer, um, this is, remember I told you, there's the three snakes, three or three frogs, Three frog spirits that come out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet, out of the mouth, mouth of the dragon. These three frog spirits are the main three religions of the world. The Jew, the Christian, and the Muslim. All right? So these three are actually, and, and if we get them... Um, so I can make a circle here for the Jew, uh, a circle here for the uh, Christian, a circle here for the Muslims. Right here in the middle of this circle here, we have that which is trying to take over the whole world. And this is the beast, the false prophet, and the Dajjal. Now these three frog spirits that come out of the mouth of this that tries to fake peace, okay, and tries to bring their control over the people of the whole world, 
and then you'll understand when the when they what they're doing with the uh, digital stuff, the digital aspects, and so on and so forth. So let me let me look at this so I can bring you into a future. Now it's very hard. I'm trying to bring you now into a future so you have an understanding of what I'm going to tell you. So these three frog spirits, which are these three main religions. None of them teach proper interpretation about the Word of God at all. They all teach the hocus pocus, the fantasy, all right? And they all think that they're, they're arguing and fighting like Cain and Abel. Now, mind you, the reason I never use the Hindu and the Buddhist in this is because there is actually Hinduism and Buddhism is a dying um, religion. And most of the, the stuff that they have in their teachings, okay, is polytheism, and it's not fully um, understood where I teach you, remember when I teach you about reincarnation, what really is reincarnation, um, according to them, so they basically kind of have the same manifestation of, of their teaching, but it's a dying, dying philosophy, right, it's a dying philosophy, because it's poly, so you don't, no one really does, follows polytheism uh, anymore, or, yeah, yeah, polytheism, most people are into monotheism, and so we have the three main monotheistic religions arriving here, and in the middle is where these guys get together, so you'll, you'll have the leader of the Jews, the leader of the Christians, and the leader of the Muslims go off over in a room together, playing kissy kissy, and, 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 and loving on each other, trying to bring about changes within their religions. They go around, walking around, trying to say, why can't we all get along? And, and, and meanwhile, they, they accept abominations as part of their religion, and they meet each other. You get what I'm saying? So they have this indoctrination that they're trying to change to uni unify all the world's religions into one main policy. And that's where you get into the policy is the Antichrist policy that will later on come about. So you'll have the Antichrist policy. Policy. It's not a government. It's a form of a government, but it's a policy government. And this policy government will be um, used uh, globally, and it will tie all religions and all governments together in that manner. And I've told you about how they're going to do that through using the World Health Organization and the doc and the Kosh basically will be a part of that uh, great deception. Um, now we get into the actual building of the temple. So now you have these wars, and why you have these wars going on? is because these organizations are the ones that fund the terrorism to begin with. People don't want to um, explain it to you in the proper context, but your tax money is what they take, and then they themselves are the ones that give weapons to the terrorists to begin with, and they sit around and fund these things. And the governments are all doing it globally. All the governments are doing it because there is an agenda of what these three were trying to do over here. So I want to redraw that so you can have a greater understanding. So these three over here are trying to bring forth this one world global type thing here. And when this takes place, then what they can do is they will cause these wars in different places on purpose so that they can implement the Nakash's rule and law of what they're going to bring about. And then it causes the building, the rebuilding of the third temple. So the third temple gets rebuilt. So in the third temple rebuilding, because an agreement, remember, there will be a fake agreement, a fake uh, peace that takes place to which the Jews will then rebuild their third temple. And this fake peace comes about through war. Now you see what we're doing now, right? So the fake peace comes about through war. And then what they're going to do is they'll start back with the old uh, law again. So you got the Muslim, they love their Sharia which is nonsense. The Jew loves their um, the, the Judeo-Mosaic law. So you have, you'll have that Mosaic law and all the things they were supposed to do with the sacrifice of animals, the feast days, all that shit. And then you're going to have the Christian, 
which will consist in all of these religions, all the hocus pocus, the abominations of gays and transgenders, and why can't we all get along, hunky dory? And you have no rights, no freedoms. You gotta be this. You gotta. You can do that. Blah blah blah. We control. We control. We control. And you'll see all this in this aspect in the future of all this mingling itself together and these frogs deceiving the world to bring about this right here which mind you this right here will only last for uh, seven years three and a half of what you fake peace and then three and a half years it's going to collapse so the third temple they bring about and now you're going to understand something about what i keep saying to you the jews are not jews that that certain jews don't belong in the land that land is the king's land that's jesus land and if you don't believe he is the king, why the fuck you in his land? Arab, Jew, Christian. And if you don't believe in the true interpretations of what the word means, Jew, Christian, Muslim, then why the fuck you in my king's land? Take your little fuck boy imagination lying, deceptive, abominable, hocus fucking pocus, and get the fuck off our land. Now you're going to understand why I say this about these fucking people, and why I can't stand religion, or the people who try to force it or put it out there as if it's some fucking truth that only they know when you see I destroy all of their so-called scholars whenever they want to interpret their books with me. Come at me, you fucking scholars of all these three religions. I'll put Constantinople and Istanbul in the fucking ground. I'll destroy you, I'll shatter your gates, I'll, I'll grab your whole fucking ideologies and thrash it. That's the meaning of that for the destruction of Constantinople and Istanbul. Because Constantinople and Istanbul is where all of these type of things came from. All right? So in the third temple, what they're going to start doing is start doing all those sacrifices again. Now the Muslims are already, they still doing it. Even right now, after Ramadan, and Eid comes along, where they do, they go and go grab a lamb, they go and sacrifice the lamb, but they don't even have the understanding of why they even do it. It's Jesus is the lamb. He brings the closing of all of this fasting and prayer, and that's where you understand what is the true fasting and prayer. So all of you are abstaining from food, thinking, <laughs> but in reality, if you look at that context, that's kind of dumb. Because look, you're going to go without food, but then at night, you're going to hurry up and eat all three meals. <laughs> you haven't done anything. You're going to gorge yourself at the end. So, if fasting has nothing to do with food, like I state, fasting consists of you setting aside that which you normally do as sin and replacing it with a new activity of prayer, which prayer is not reciting words. Prayer is the act of doing something good, getting the, the, the seraphim, cherubim spirits in you, rather than the tetraphone spirits in you, casting out that which is darkness, replacing within your eye which is single the light, and live a prayerful way, as in Jesus doing. Sometimes certain aspects of humans will not leave, will not be corrected, unless they fast and pray. So when you put those two things together, as what I taught, the fasting and the praying creates a new vessel, a new human in that context of your activity and what you're doing and saying. It has nothing to do with reciting fucking words, prayers, long prayers, all that shit Jesus hates. It has nothing to do with eating because you eat with unwashed hands. Oh, the eating with unwashed It's not what goes into you that defiles you. It's what comes out of you. So why are you not eating food? That doesn't do anything. You eat food, it's just going to be shit out. Your body uses whatever it needs and then it shits the rest out. So you, you, your, your fasting and prayer is not proper in any of your fucking religions. And all of you teach the same bullshit. All of you teach the same shaitanic doctrine in your dead man grave. Go fuck yourself. I prove it. I prove it here for everyone. 
So in the third temple, now they're going to start and bring this back as law. They want to bring the law back, right? Now we know who 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 conquered the law for us, who who fulfilled the law and stated it was finished. And now we have a daily sacrifice that we get to practice for our forgiveness of our sins. As long as we remain fasting and praying, which is the struggle, fasting and praying in the struggle the right way, we always have that daily sacrifice that we can do if we lose a battle in our struggle or our jihad. Jihad doesn't mean you go and have war with someone else, neither Muslim. So you understand what jihad is, you understand the word struggle. Israel is the word struggle. Anyone who wants to do and practice what I, I am teaching and saying, you are truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit, for you know the truth. Therefore, you can come to the land of the king and live there. All these other motherfuckers, you better get the fuck out. Because if you don't listen to the Mahdi, and I'm telling you, get the fuck out, and you bring forth this shit. When Jesus comes back, he himself is going to look at you and say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. So they won't listen to me, of course. The student document. So they want to bring back the law and the forcing of things that you can't keep and can't do. And then they'll want to do what? Start sacrificing animals again. Now, this is going to bring a fifth into the world. Sacrificial offering of animals over and over. Now, you know, this is going to piss off the animal rights people. You understand? <laughs> animal, think about it. Then, meanwhile, you got all these starving children in the world. And here you're going to have a... a, 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 a now, when you don't want to get confused, the daily sacrifice. This is not the daily sacrifice. The daily sacrifice is that which God gave you. The daily sacrificing that they do is of the law, which has been fulfilled. You don't need to do it anymore. We have the new covenant now, not the old. We have a new covenant, not the old covenant. And the new covenant consists of only two commands. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and do unto others as yourself. That sums up the whole law. Boom, it's gone. You are a new creation in repentance, and you have a daily sacrifice that you must remember to practice. Here, they don't believe that. They don't believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Jews. They don't believe Jesus is the Son of God, Muslims. They, Christians, don't follow that which the Lord Most High God commanded through the priest in the order of Melchizedek, the two commands and the sacrifice to do on a daily. They don't believe that. They think you can run around and just be what you want to be. Jesus loves you. Now you see the clowns. You see this three ring circus sideshow happening here. Now, during this, they'll start bringing forth, like I state, the LGBTQ, the fags, the lesbians, all the abominations will start being accepted in, into their so-called new, new laws that they will create within their own selves where they will try to unite everything for three and a half years, it seems to work, and then it falls all apart. Because in this offering, they're going to they're gonna bring about lots of fitna in the world. Lots of fitna. Fitna means lots of corruption and wicked works, evil doings, allowing in the assembly of the people and the corruption of all of the people. Well, they will have nothing righteous in the world. Everything will be turned and flipped upside down. They will call good evil and evil good in this greater manner, right? So in this, they will do this. And those that know God will know and clearly will be able to see what I teach is the truth. What they teach is complete heretics, complete liars, complete blasphemers. And though they appear as an angel of light in their so-called dead man grave of religion, when you know the truth of what I teach and you look at them now, you know they are nothing but shaitan. Period. Period. So... In this, they will be doing all of this type of thing. Meanwhile, there's going to be a city, and that's in Saudi Arabia, which will be the Dajjal city. Oh, the digital city. 
Now I'm going to bring in the Muslim along in with this. Because here's the Jew aspect. We understand the Christian aspect along with the Jew aspect. Well, where does the Muslim fall along in this aspect? Well, because of the new law and the new order that they will bring about, it will be all part of a digital type world where now you can't buy, sell, or trade unless you have the mark. And if you don't believe in their new way, then they can stop you from anything, everything. You can't buy, sell, or trade unless you take upon the mark of the beast. And what is the mark of the beast? It is the number of a name of a man. 600346, like I have taught you. So this belief of this digital type world will fall in with this. And then when they do their daily world sacrificing, they will do it on the TV. Church will be on TV. Everybody come and gather around. They bring that fake peace, the Abraham Accords and all the other fake shit that they do. Hey, Saudi Arabia and Israel getting along. Look at them. Oh, yeah, they getting along. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know, and, and, and they do all this type of stuff. And then they'll be globalized in a manner to where you will see these things take place on the TV. Right. Everybody gather around. It's 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 something o'clock. And no work today. Don't go to work because we're all going to watch a bunch of crazy people kill animals on TV. It's the new thing. And 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 who's going to be performing it today? Well, why goodness, it's going to be the new transgender ironic priesthood, and quite possibly his assistant. A robot, AI. Ooh, -hoo. everybody gonna love it. <laughs> you see it. You understand what I'm saying? It's all—it's it's a three-ring circus fucking sideshow, and it's all for profit. All for profit because it will be on pay-per-view. Oh yes, pay-per-view. You can pay, watch it on pay-per-view. It's a three-ring circus sideshow. And it's nothing but profit, profits, 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 profits. Dollar signs here, dollar signs here, dollar signs everywhere. We's on the dollar sign now. And you can't buy, sell, or trade unless you're going to be part of our three ring circus sideshow. Get your tickets here. Get your tickets here. This is what it's bringing. This is what it's coming to, you guys. Not, 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 there's no mystery to it. There's no hocus pocus around this. There's no something that you can't understand. This is what's happening. And they will use, like I showed you in the very beginning, they will use the men and women of renown to cause it all to happen. They'll breathe and bring back to life those things through AI technology that were once ancient. Elvis is alive. Elvis is going to perform on stage. Hallelujah. He's going to sing in a Muslim recitation. Uh, or whatever these guys have planned for their three ring circus sideshow today. And they'll bring to life all these things through their AI holographic uh, type thing. And everyone will just sit back and watch this shit. And they will, it, it'll be so fucking foul, you may not even go to work because they have already for everyone robots doing different things. So they have killed a lot of people through their wars. They have killed a lot of people through their diseases that they create unnatural. A lot of the population is decreasing. This is what they want. So that way, when they usher in the new world order or this new world thing, like I showed you with the three, the dots, when they enter into this, then they can set aside and say, you get this amount of money every month. You get this amount of money every month. And But you won't get that unless you tune in. We'll know you're tuning in or not because we've got you monitored. We're monitoring everything. 
We get the eyes all over the place. We know everything people are doing. Just like in China, how they monitor who's next to who, whose credit scores this, whose credit scores that. You don't need to drive a vehicle. We come pick you up. Oh, but you misbehave. Well, you can't go out this week. You grounded. Daddy government grounded you. Now, you better be good for a week, and then you can come out again. But you stay home, and you watch the Three Ring Circus Science Show that's playing. And maybe we can program you to believe greater, better ways and truths that we ourselves are concocting in our imagination for you to follow. And then they'll broadcast uh, sports, like I say. The sports will be, will be a different manner. All these, it, 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 man, I'm telling you, it's coming. It's around the corner right now. And right now they are using your money, your taxpayers' money to build this shit. How many of you are going to keep letting them do this shit, man? How long are we going to sit around and watch our governments and our religions manipulate us and cause all this fucking fitna on the earth? Do you not realize... You will all get punished because of the products that you're going to be using. Read Revelation. Read what takes place when the trumpets start sounding and the angels of God pour out the bowls of wrath upon the men and women who have taken the mark of the beast. Now, I can ex I'll explain that in a later video because that's not hocus pocus neither. That's a reality that you can comprehend if you had someone that actually interprets the word of God the proper way. There's nobody out there like me. I'm telling you all right now. There's only one of me. There's only one. And I'm that man. Whether you believe it or not, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. As long as I know the truth, I'm on the right path. I know I'm going to get away from this shit. You won't. You'll be stuck in it, and then you're going to get punished by it. Now, can we defeat it? We will be fighting this. Of course, when this rises up, there is also the kingdom of the Mahdi. So the Mahdi will be, in a manner, a ruler over the righteous, and there will be the wicked, and we will be fighting each other. And then Isa comes down, and he won't be on their side. He's going to be on my side. And he is going to fuck them up. And all those people who thought they're so righteous, well, look, we looking at the name of Jesus. We said this in your name. We did that in your name. We followed the Jews. We followed the Muslim way. We followed the law, man. We are following the law. <laughs> He's going to look at you and say, depart from me. You workers of iniquity. You foul motherfuckers of humanity. Who neglected love, compassion, mercy. All so you could sit around and profit and lie and deceive. Be gone from me. I never knew you. Now you guys understand it? And if you have any questions, I can get deeper into how this is going to come about as well. But I don't have much much time on this video. I've gone almost for an hour now. And my camera might be running out of time. Otherwise, I'll go deeper into how this will come about. Like what what's coming in the days ahead of when this will be coming about. I can even go deeper into it. Maybe I will in some later videos. But like I say... I don't really feel like getting banned again uh, or taken down. Um, but if you want to know, this is it. This, this, you're at the right place. If you want to know how things are going to happen and what's going to take place, I'm the man. I'm your man who's going to give you the truth. All right? And I don't gain from it. I don't profit from it. It's freely given to me. I want to freely give it to everyone else in the understanding of it. All right? Digital currency is not a mark literally on your hand or on your forehead in that manner. Digital currency is the, ac the actual um, knowledge of something in the manner. When it's on the head, it's like you are... 
you you are agreeing to go online to purchase because you're you've agreed and then the hand is in the, in the same manner there will be certain things as we progress into the three ring circus side show that you you can swipe and stuff like that so the prophet has seen many elements to the mark of the beast but the ultimate mark will be the one that everyone agrees to mindfully which is this digital currency there is nothing tangible it's just something that's digitally there in a zero 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 one zero 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 one zero zero these type of things as a as a number and the number that this this is will be promoted by is from a man who will give the the who who will cause this to take place because of the technology that he's working on and the things that he's doing which will later on be elon musk's son who is the cause that will give the governments of the world will say oh well that's great i think well let's all just use it and implement his and now oh, and then we also gonna bring life into an image which will be the ai and the false prophet in this manner and then this is the thing, the false prophet on one of the shows, it's going to be a great, um, what do they call it when you get the ringmaster to come out? And it's a great, fantastic show because today, everyone, we have the ultimate that's going to show up, the false prophet, who will go into the temple where they're offering sacrifices on live TV. And he will go into the temple and he will set in upon the temple throne and in the temple and there he will claim to be God. It's coming. It's coming. All right, my friends. I hope you guys understand this. If you have any questions, you want me to make any other videos, please feel free to ask me. I most certainly will for you. Shalom. 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 Peace be with you.